Hello, it is Jack Gill and welcome back to Redmen Academy. I am, as always, joined by James McHale. Um, a fresh idea today. Um, this is one that we've been hoping to do for a while, um, but we've been spurred into it, really. Um, Paul Machen, um over the weekend with a, a text asking about Leighton Clarkson has uh, pushed us into doing this video. Um, and yeah, simply uh, we're looking into different players at the Liverpool Academy and helping you know more about who they are, what kind of players they are, etc, etc. Um, today, um, the two that we'll be looking at are Leighton Clarkson and Jake Kane, two young lads who have made the squad in recent weeks um, to young midfielders and players that both you and I have, have admired for, for some time, James. Yeah, definitely. I think they're two players that are sort of highly regarded at the club and are sort of seen as a future in that sort of midfield area, you know, obviously having different roles, but both, you know, being equally as exciting and having their own set of strengths and, you know, weaknesses at a young age. Yeah, and this series could be very important because obviously with the move over to Kirby now, Jürgen Klopp is very close um, to seeing our academy stars um, as often as possible now. Um, obviously, you were at the game at Kirby at the weekend, the under-23s game against Southampton. Jürgen Klopp was there himself watching, um, making full use of the new facilities. And, and yeah, we know um, from some quotes after the international break where he's praised um, a, a few youngsters himself. Um, let's just sort of give you a bit of a quiz here, James. He's, he's praised four youngsters that have trained over the international break. Do you know which four he praised? I want to say it. I've just been looking at this. I'm pretty sure that it was Louis Longstaff, Jay Kane, Leighton Clarkson, and was it Paul Glatzel? It certainly was. So yeah, um, yeah, smashed it there, James. Uh, but but yeah, he's he's praised them four. But he also said in in the same sort of breath that actually those four are training well with them at the minute but actually with the new facilities there could be many many more that are coming through and, and training with the first team now which is great news um, but without further ado we'll get cracking and we'll start with Leighton Clarkson now Leighton Clarkson obviously made the bench yesterday um, against Leicester in that, that big win that really important win um, I thought it was very interesting before the game you obviously saw our bench it looked so much weaker than usual we know how much injuries we've got but it was good to see Leighton Clarkson and on there, he's 19 years old, turned 19 in October, was born in Blackburn. Interestingly, interestingly enough, um, people probably know him most from uh, a friendly game uh, prior to Project Restart, where he scored a, a very, very nice goal against Blackburn. Pep Linders spoke at the time uh, on Clarkson, saying that actually he'd been training with, with the club for a while before then, and he, he's really impressed with him as, as, as a DM James, yeah. and how, you know, he's a typical sort of Klopp, Number six, he, yeah. he reads the game well. He's a very good passer of the ball and he finds Mo and, and Sadio in between the lines. Yeah, definitely. I think that comes back to, you know, when he was coming through to first got under 18. So I've got a quote here from saying that I remember when Stephen Jarrod was doing almost one on one sessions with Adam Lewis. So when I went up, I was doing the same things with Adam. It was me, Adam, and Gerard just hitting free kicks after sessions and stuff for about 20 minutes or so. I think that sort of highlights how important it is that he knows that he has to keep training. That, you know, once you make that step up, you have to up your game each time. You can't sort of rest on your laurels and, you know, you have to put in this effort because it's going to be noticed by those higher for the club and you're not going to get sort of that little push, that little chance without it. It's just what you want to hear as well, isn't it? A, a young, exciting midfielder coming through and, you know, when he was learning at the age of 16, he was he was working with Steven Gerrard and, and learning from one of the best midfielders in the whole, the history of the Premier League. Um, yeah, he, if, if you speak to Leighton Clarkson, he'll tell you that he can play in, in all three positions, 6, 8 and 10. We've seen him play in a more advanced role than we know him in the 6 when he's played alongside Pedro Chirivea and, and, and stuff like that. But I certainly think his best position is in the six. He's very, very good technically. Um, as I say, he's, he's a very good passer of the ball. He has a real eye for, for everything going on and a really good reader of the game. Um, but he's just got so much to his game, hasn't he, James? Yeah, definitely. He's sort of like that quarterback, number six, that you want to see. You know, you don't want to make those sort of comparisons too early on, but very much like a sort of Xabi Alonso kind of player who's going to sit back, play those balls forward and keep things, you know, ticking over in the midfield because that's where he is, you know. He can shoot and he does like going forward, but ultimately 
he's that kind of player that you want sitting just in front of the fence, passing it on to maybe the more offensive, you know, players like your Jake Cades, like your Curtis Joneses, who are going to be able to do some real damage going forward. My only worry about Leighton Clarkson is how he develops physically. Um, I'm not sure about you, James, but for me, obviously at the minute you look at Leighton Clarkson, I know he's only 19, but you look at him and you can tell he's still a kid. You know, five foot eight, um, very fragile. Uh, with that being said, when he's playing football, none of that matters because he's so good with the ball at his feet and, you know, he's he's an animal when he's playing football. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's one of them things where hopefully he develops a bit more physically because I think when he when he enters the man's game, when he becomes a first-teamer on a regular basis for Liverpool, he's going to need to be a bit more um, physically able. Um, but at the same time... I'm I'm confident of him becoming a real star, even with with you know his physicality at the moment. Yeah, definitely. We know that size doesn't mean everything in football. You know, there's plenty of top players who you know, like Lionel Messi, for example, who aren't the biggest of lads. But you, know, you do see even at the 23 level, most of the players on the pitch are bigger than him, and obviously that size difference is even more apparent at the men's game. But we saw against Shrewsbury, you know, he's such an instrumental player there. It didn't seem to phase him at all, and he was able to do things, you know, that you know far beyond his age that. He didn't seem to be affected by his size at all because he's that good technically and he's got such a wise head on his shoulders that it didn't really matter and he made use of what he has and he's clearly a very talented young lad. You mentioned Shrewsby there and, and you know he made his professional debut for Liverpool against Aston Villa in the FL Cup where obviously it was a very young side. Um, again, made his first start for Liverpool against Shrewsbury, um, this time in the FA Cup. Um, and I thought he was outstanding that that game. And, you know, we spoke at the beginning of the last season about both players that we're going to speak about today, Leighton Clarkson and Jake Kane, when they were at that point in time in the under-18s with Barry Lutus. And we said, look, you could tell from the get-go they were a class above the rest at the time and, and ready to step up for, from the start of last season. Um, they're both cup winners um, and they've made the step up and they don't look out of place. And, and now they're training with the first team. Definitely, yeah. No, we saw their form for the under 18s, and you know there were concerns over whether they'd be able to replicate that form because we see it time and time again where a player can excel at one age group, steps up, and they sort of just flatline. But these lads seem to be going from strength to th- strength, and it doesn't seem to be phasing them that you know they're now seen as sort of the leaders on the pitch, and their presence is definitely felt when they're not there because they're so instrumental in the way these local teams play. Absolutely. Um, and signed a, a long term contract at the end of July as well, which is really good news because when we've got um, a, a bit of a star coming through, we like to keep them around. And I, I think Leighton Clarkson really is one of those. Um, I mentioned earlier that the coaches are big, big fans um, of, of Leighton Clarkson. The Paul Pep Linders have spoke highly on him. Um, this is a quote from him. He says, Leighton Clarkson, who sees with his own eyes the constant runs of Sadio and Mo in behind, he has the capacity to play the passes these type of forwards like to receive. He is the type of number six we really like, the one who can dictate play, but dictate with direction, who can speed up the tempo of the positional play, the one who always has time on the ball. And, you know, great quote, James, because, you know, when... You of such a young age, and you get such high praise from from world class coaches. Um, it, it must be good for for Clarkson to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it, you know it's a credit to him because he's the kind of player who, when he's under pressure, he knows when to release the ball. He knows where to move in order to when he receives the ball. He's not, you know, he's got that a few yards to make that pass. He knows how to be smart with it at his feet. He knows, you know, how to get the best out of his teammates too. And that's such a vital thing for, you know, any player coming through at Liverpool and. It's no surprise that he's getting, you know, his form's being picked up on by the coaching staff because he is so, so good. Yeah, and we're going to move on to, to Jake Kane in a moment, someone who does get the goals and, and does get the assists. Leighton Clarkson isn't a man who comes away with loads of stats like that in, in terms of goals and assists, but he's a man where he stands out when you watch him on the pitch. You know, he's, he, he's a lad who you watch him and, and you see the game because he's that sort of player where he dictates everything. As Pep Linder says there, you go and watch the, the academy lads and, and Leighton Clarkson will immediately stand out. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's it's clear to see the quality. You know, you know, you can go into your first game and he's going to be someone that you notice straight away being one of the key players just because everything seems to go through him and he's seen the way that the team plays around him. He's absolutely vital. Absolutely. And now moving on to Jake Kane. What a start to the season he's had. 
Yeah, definitely. You know, he's superb the back end of last season too, and he's gone from strength to strength playing, you know, seven games in the Premier League, two, three goals, two assists. You know, he's he's absolutely central, same way that Leighton Clarkson is to the way they play. And you know, I think without him being there, it's, he's absolutely missed. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, Jake Kane is, is one where, as I'll say again, start last season under 18s, doing exactly the same thing that he's doing with the under 23s now getting plenty of goals, plenty of assists from midfield. Um, and he really stood out for Barry Lutus. And you thought, when's he going to make the step up to the under-23s? Um, he didn't get to make the... the, the, uh, the uh, he didn't get to, to go on the pitch against Aston Villa in the FL Cup. Um, but he got a start against Shrewsbury where, again, like Clarkson, he really impressed. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you say, he began to get more and more impressive as the season went on for the under-23s. I know that their season was sort of brought to an early halt and they didn't play much football at the back end of last season. Um, but th- there was a slow sort of transition for him where, you know, he was getting minutes in the under-23s, but he wasn't standing out. Whereas now he started the season, he's really standing out and he's he's showing himself as a really, really important player for Barry Lutus this season. Yeah, definitely. You know, obviously he's played every game for the 23 of the season, bar the Southampton match and you could definitely tell that he wasn't there because we're so used to seeing him excel for that team and how he's sort of looked at as a leader in that side, despite only just turning 19. And it was just the way that the Liverpool team played without him. You could definitely tell that he's definitely in those plans and he's going to be, you know, in those plans, you know, for at least the immediate future, you know, long term as well, if he stays with them, because he's so, so good. And he offers something that nobody else in that team seems to offer, which is on the set pieces, you know, obviously, Tyler, you know, Max Waltman as well. They're very good players, you know, in that who are set piece specialists, but he has something about them where he can turn anything into a dangerous opportunity, especially from free kicks from corners. Yeah, it's a similar thing with Corness from from the under eighteens, isn't it? But we'll speak about him another day. Um yeah, Jay Kane, outstanding player. Um, versatile, can play in numerous positions in, in that midfield. Again, he's he's a left footer. Um, and as as we said, he, he constantly delivers them numbers, goals and assists all the time. And, and he's proven so important for, for the under-23s. I can see why he's, he's very close um, to, to Jürgen Klopp's first team squad as well, because at the minute we're, we're low on, on midfielders. And, you know, I think he certainly could come into to the midfield and, and do a job and, and be really... Be, be really entertaining and, and threatening because that that's the sort of player he is. Um, he seems to me like a, a, a typical Klopp midfielder. You know, mm-hmm. the sort of... W- what I see in him now is is what I saw in Curtis Jones um, when, when he was st- first starting to break through. You know, someone hung, hungry, someone who's got the flair. Um, and, and now you, you look at Curtis Jones where how much he's evolved over the last... 12, 18 months, he's he's almost become the complete midfielder from what we saw in, in his display against Leicester. Um, Jay Kane's had some co- comparisons saying that he's he, he's a similar sort of style to Jordan Henderson, James. What what do you make of that? I mean, he's high-end, Jersey. I've just been reading that piece myself. I think it was in the Liverpool Echo a little while ago. And, you know, he has a lot of that about him, but he also, you know, with Jordan Henderson is definitely, you know, a way of course he has that creativity. Jake Kane seems more like a natural 10 who can also play in the eight position where, you know, he's going to run around all day for you. He's going to do that, you know, the dirty work on the pitch, but also once he gets the ball, he's going to carry it forward and he's going to look to go on the offensive immediately. And that's quite rare. And, you know, whether that'll get beaten out of him eventually once he gets to the first team as, you know, Klopp has a habit of doing to his midfielders, but he's clearly got all the traits to become an all-rounder in this Liverpool team. And I have you know, complete faith in him doing that. Yeah, he's positive on the ball, isn't he? He's a forward thinker and, you know, yeah, a, a great 10. But like you say, he can also play in the eight. And that, that's where I, I see similar to Curtis Jones in him because, you know, I, th- I think he's he's always got that eye for gold. He's always got the eye for, for creation. But I think as he evolves as a player, that, that defensive mindset will, will sort of kick in a bit more. And, and, you know, I think Klopp, as you say, will definitely try and stamp that on him. Um, it makes you think as well, if, if you put... Jay Kane and Leighton Clarkson together, I genuinely think you get the perfect midfielder in terms of their their capabilities together in the team. When those two play together, you've got a very good midfield. Yeah, definitely. I think it's only a matter of time until they start getting picked up on, you know, outside the Liverpool circle, where I think people are starting to see, you know, over the last 12 months that Curtis Jones is the real deal. I don't think it's going to take much longer, maybe a few appearances in the first team for 
Clarkson and Clay to be looked at in the same sort of way because they have, you know, maybe not, you know, sort of the flashiness that Curtis Jones has, but they've definitely got all the talent and all the determination to go, you know, just as far as him, you know, if they're given the opportunity. And I personally, James, I'd like to see them stick around till the end of the season. Both of them, you know, keep on doing what they're doing in the under-23s, getting close to, to you know, getting some first-team performances with, with getting in Klopp's match day squads as they are at the moment. Um, and then next season, maybe go out and loan somewhere. League One, toughen up a bit, especially Clarkson. I think somewhere like League One, like the Championship, will be really, really useful for him because he, he, he can learn, you know, the physicality of, of the first team game. Yeah, definitely. I think where Clarkson needs to definitely bulk up and get used to physicality, I think Jake Kane will need to learn something a little bit different where it'll be adapting his all around play because physically he's quite strong on the ball, but it's. He's very offensive. I think if he wants to get into the local team, he's going to need to work on the defensive side of his game, as you said. And you know, they're, they're completely different, you know, types of low moves with different purposes. But ultimately, they'll both leave them in a better suited position to come into this local team. You know, maybe 12, 18 months time. Completely agree. Um, so yeah, I hope that helped you understand uh, a, a bit more about Jake Kane and Leighton Clarkson. Uh, if, if you want to know more, um, message in the comments and, and me and James will both be in there reading your comments and, and reply to you. Also, the first comment naming the next two players for us to do, we will do um, for you. So yeah, this is going to be a bit of a series. So if you name the next two young Liverpool lads that you want to know a bit more about, put it down below and me and James will do them next. Um, thank you very much for watching and we shall see you soon. ta -ra.